Hello, Bame Farm fans. We're on a creative adventure today. <clears throat> well, before the camera viciously interrupted us, we now have one giant elevator, two 16-foot harvest handlers put together with their chains. We only had to remove a small piece of aluminum. I don't know what you really wanted to see as we took out our extra parts from what became the middle there. It was disassembly. Some things were actually greased and they came apart better than I expected. Some things actually came apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not rich in sheet aluminum, but I did get lucky at a auction once to come across many sheets of galvanized tin, nice and smooth. And we are doing our best to have holes pre-drilled for these bolts. Cause I don't want to be sitting there trying to drill holes while we're trying to put these back together. Cause we're going to use obviously the holes at our seam really because of the flow of the elevator we don't want to like screw it in because we'll have the paddles and stuff moving over so we got to you know, go up here where it's engineered to have all the bolts in it and this should also help stiffen up you know, our seam here so I don't have to worry about it flexing while we move it now once it's in the bin it's sitting flat on blocks fully supported that won't be a big deal Well, yeah, but you're hitting the bolts down here. I gotta spread it a little bit. Okay. Here we go together. Our lovely galvanized steel patch. in the middle of somewhat remanufacturing the back end here. Uh, both elevators were, there was a lot of corrosion and we're trying just to sure it up since we've removed quite a bit of material, like the hopper at the top just for structural stability. I mean, it'll be fully supported, but we'll feel better knowing we did our best to make it as strong as possible. And I'm down here at the other end, like a full walk. There's our middle splice. I am moving the tensioning pulley. It's also gear reduction because there's two pulleys there. I'm moving it as far out as possible. There will probably be about two foot of elevator outside the bin, so we'll be able to stack. Everything will be run on really short belts, but we'll be able to stack it here at the very end. We'll have a nice... I can't think of the term for we'll go with like front drive or positive drive so we're pulling the load only on top instead of like those big new ideas I bought where they all drive from the bottom but you're pulling the chain almost all the way around the loop. So it's just a quick mid project progress report. What is underneath the floor in the center of this bin? This will be the ear corn bin. And my plans have morphed quite a bit. It started out that I was gonna take this up and you see there's a channel in the concrete that I was gonna bust the concrete out all the way across to make one long channel to put an elevator in. Changed my mind on that. So I'm gonna get these screws out and uh, I'll show you what's underneath this floor. And as the video unfolds, you'll see what my new plan is. So they have these nice trim pieces around the edge. You know, kind of to seal it up. Ooh, that one's gonna be rusted in place. How about this one? And we'll see how well the old floor comes apart. Because of course the piece I can't pull up is where I really need to start. Lovely.
Well, wasn't that a blast? Once I got a screwdriver, I was able to pry it apart, and a little bit of work from the mallet. But let's have a look-see at what sort of mess somebody way back when thought was a good idea for a grain bin. I thought I was gonna find maybe cinder blocks. Nope, we have just a slight indentation in the concrete, which won't be too bad to work with. Well, I got some things cut loose on the inside, so we might have some fun deconstructing the bin. Because we won't need this rod in its place to uh, open or close the gate in the center. And if we look down low here, there's not a whole lot left of this tube. So for the sheer fact of not tripping over it, I'll probably end up cutting that off eventually. I did all the cutting, mostly just that bit of pipe right there where the uh, slider rod went through. And I got the bolts off and the clamp. So now we can see, it's not as in bad a shape as I thought. There's still a hole there. I would have expected more stuff to be rusted out. And we may need to use it as a guide when we work on the next bin. Look at that lovely mouse nest. Schmutz. Oh, and another fun note. Speaking of schmutz, let's look at this. So, we see all this. There's been rodents coming in the fan tunnel for a while. I was going to put the screwdriver in. That's how deep it is. <laughs> There's eight inches or so of compost there. I actually do hit concrete, not gravel. I'm surprised about that. So I got to get a few scoops of good compost. I don't know how you can see it, but you can see some black Sharpie marks that I used to mark out where I need to cut. pretend we do something cool here, but we're gonna snap our fingers, come back, voila, and it'll be clean. Just give me a second. Well, I made an interesting discovery in here. I couldn't figure out what held these covers in place. So I just started pulling, and with two hands it goes better. but I'm revealing a whole new trapped area of schmutz. But I will probably leave these out. Because uh, I'm most likely going to put the fan back outside. But the tunnel would direct all the air to the middle. And maybe this section over here wouldn't get as much air because it all has to go that way before turning and coming back. So I'm going to take quite a bit of it out and only leave maybe a plank or two over here by the edge so then the air can get out underneath the floor faster. It's all clean now. The finish at the bottom of the trough wasn't very good, but there's concrete. Well, I think we're ready for an elevator to try to come through that hole. We got probably 20 buckets. 
have great compost for the yeah. tomato plants. was a small struggle. I did cut it plenty tight. This side looks pretty good. I could probably fill that in with some sealer stuff and feel pretty good about that. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'm gonna try to use something heavy or just some caulking. This side, I did not do so good on. I mean, it's close. And I definitely had, you know, my struggles with the bolts. The lower ones are the problem because at the seams, you probably couldn't see that in that fast action video, but we'll go inside and take a look at it. Let's climb in. I'm getting really good at this. Getting in and out of this door. Oh, now the echo begins. I sure hope this audio is good. I'm gonna be annoyed if not. Okay, here we are. These bolts. Because there's an extra layer of aluminum, plus the bolt. I had to like really fight with those. But we're in. And now we just need to cut a hole for this end, which I don't have it in straight, but theoretically where I'm standing, we see that row of bolts just to the right of the door and we spin around. We're lining up with this row of bolts because there's an odd number of panels in uh, every set. That straight across, Will actually be just to the one side. I did not plan that well. I should have seen that when I cut the hole. But minor detail. But I know the well for the grain, assuming it was centered to be able to put a sweep in here, was you know right about there. So this is just a preliminary look at the elevator before we get the floor in. I believe I have enough cuts made. And I was really good this time, because I made this as one nice piece. The fun part will be, let's turn it around and see if it fits. It's pretty close. I might have actually done okay with my angles there, but we're not going in exact. So the fun part is, clean up that burr a little bit, but we're going to stop, shove the elevator through now. I think we can see well enough from that angle. Let me see how good I do with the cutting. I may had to make this end a little smaller. I didn't have to, but I did because we'll see it in the middle in a second. Oh, rats. Got that one bolt. I went through and cut off all the bolts on the sides. Really, not be any longer than their uh, nuts. Oh man, this this end is tight. That's good. It's real good. It ain't right if it's not tight. Ow! Then I got these gloves on. Okay. Well, we gotta take a look. And see how much is sticking out. Now I can assemble that end. I'm most proud of that. I did really good. That's tight on the bottom. 
That's pretty good. Like I can, except for up there, which is hard to do because of the roll in the metal. I got that pretty tight. We can seal that. Obviously, it's gonna be open up top here, but outside, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put like a little, a little something to keep the rain off. A little like a roof over it, we'll say. Well, here it is on the outside, and I gotta put this shaft back in. Um, but we'll see how it's too much longer. And, uh, and I'll explain then why I have it sticking out the back. But uh, that's pretty good. And we'll, you know, make a little, little roof or something to keep the rain off of it. So I just grind them open a little bit, and uh, they've always held just fine. I've done it multiple times, so now we get one full loop, and we can go outside and put some tension on it. So we're slowly going to tighten this. Since we're running horizontal, we don't necessarily need to have the chain super tight. And that's kind of what causes some of the wear on the bottom of these is that the chain is too tight. So I gotta be careful of that. So we're just gonna take up some slack, but I don't wanna make it tight. You can see how much slack we have there. I pulled it all out. And we're just gonna twist and twist. And this is gonna be a slow process, but it'll also determine how much room I absolutely need to have the elevator sticking out the wall of the bin here. Well, let's take a quick hand turn of it. So far, so good. I haven't made a full turn. It'll take a hot second doing it by hand to get the chain all the way around now that we're pulling 30 feet. And we're still going to get the motor set on, but we'll do that. It's probably one of the last things since it's outside and the motor is probably going to sit right here at the very end and I got to find all the little real short belts and uh, anyway, we just got to put the floor in now we have come to the wood cutting portion of this video 
Yes, the drawings for the floor say to put two by sixes on top of the concrete block. And we'll see the floor laying out here shortly. But right now, we're cutting our two by sixes. And I'm not overly worried about the type of wood. Uh, this is pin oak we're cutting. There's some ash in the stack. We're finding out just how good we can mill um, a log into the exact number of boards. Pretty soon we'll go to fast action, but we'll see one close-up shot. Just maybe. Don't want to hit the holding claw in the middle there. The sawmill has automatic settings. So you put Put in the height and hit it does. This isn't meant to be a sawmill video, this is a quick overview. At some point we've got more hay wagons to build or work on, so we might see more sawmill later. This is log number three for the day. Might have to do one or two more to have enough for one bin floor. Requires about 331 board feet by my calculations. Aluminum shavings, I'm using some of the parts from the uh, aluminum flatbed to help fill in gaps. Um, so yes, we're getting ready to put block in. We've got boards laid down. The design plans don't call for these but since I know how poorly laid the concrete is, hopefully this decking board will help uh, alleviate some of those problems with the pouring. Uh, but also we needed something to deal with our hole here. And we've layered all sorts of stuff and stacked it up. Here's a real good one. You see I've got aluminum, obviously the blocks, a piece of decking piece of aluminum, more blocks, and then there's a piece of steel in there. Well, actually, there's a piece of aluminum, that's why it's so shiny, I thought it was daylight. I have a piece of aluminum up top. And it's like that all the way across, various thicknesses of stuff to hopefully bridge the gap between the concrete, lack of concrete, and the elevator. And we're gonna say it's as well supported as we can do. So now we're ready to sweat and stack our blocks. At least these boards being down, they have that all laid out for us, and all I gotta do is just sweat and drop them. You ready for this? Absolutely. So, the, the annoying part is the door because we gotta lift them all up. However, we have the skid steer ready and waiting to lift up pallets full of blocks and bring them to the door. Who broke a sweat watching us work? His back hurts. It's backwards. There's a lot of blocks. There's 180 something blocks. The chart 
would lead us to believe that we'd only need about one. Ah, oh, rats. That's what I get for, yeah, that's what I get for trying to be an acrobat. But the blocks are in. And we even got a few planks. We got ourselves a little floor so we could work at the door easier. But this is what we milled, and we got to get a bunch more wood in here to lay on top of the block. So the wood is done, and I have the first two planks in place. So we got to start. And these two are the, the hardest two. Hopefully, there's enough light down here. Maybe we'll do it over here by this side. Let's take a look up, up in there. Eh, we can't see much. Great. I don't have a light either. Let's get a light. We have a lighting device. Well, polka dots. Now, okay, so we see there's a, a small block on top of the block. That's to support the floor plank. And then, if you see, there's a screw. I went down and put a sheet metal screw, oh, we'll say on average every foot underneath. Pretty much two per gap here, and there's 16 inches in the gaps, so if I spaced them, they're roughly a foot. To help, well, I had to support the floor, or anchor the floor to the elevator, so that never moved, so a corn never get through that gap. And then, um, I don't know, just to, just to help hold the floor up, or help hold the elevator up to the floor a little bit. Well, would you look at that? We're making progress on the floor. This is my giant puzzle, for which, I guess, I mean, there's a picture. Um, and I'll, you know, I'd say a lot of floors would be a puzzle because if you buy them from a bin manufacturer or you buy the right size used floor that matches your bin, you would have all the right pieces. I am building the puzzle from scratch, essentially, um, and piecing together multiple floors. You can see different shades of um, galvanization. You can even see different styles on this piece. And it all fits most. See, part of my problem is right now is that I don't want to use pieces that I could use down the line, which inevitably I am, because I'm trying to use the biggest stuff first or find ones that fit together well. And I'm getting into where on the left side of the bin that I'm almost down to the shorter runs where I know I've got planks and I can do that as one piece. And now, like, do I use this long one? Because I know in a few pieces I could use something that's almost 21 foot long real easy. That is the challenge. Here is my other collection of flooring. I've got this real nice shiny stuff. That's fairly new. It all came out of like a 21 foot bin. I thought I could stretch it, which I guess at some point I will. I really like it. It fits well with what I'm using now. And then I'm back here on the back, there's this perforated style. This came out of a barn. It's all 14 foot wide planks. So I could piece that together for sure and have a whole lot of cutoffs. Like, I'd end up with seams in the same places. But I could definitely cover some area if I wanted to sit there and splice every piece, which a lot of these I have been. No big deal. Um, but for some reason, I guess working by myself, I don't want to do that. Um, Brennan isn't available every day, obviously. He's got stuff and things of his own to do. And I'm trying to, like, do some stuff while he's not here, which this would still eat time. Like, it wouldn't be a good use of time with two people because there's just a lot of measuring, getting in and out. And we'll say this is... Oh, just slow work. Two people wouldn't necessarily make it faster. We could both be measuring. Maybe, but it's still getting it to fit and stuff. And working in the bin like this with two people, sometimes I bring the pieces in wrong. And when we gotta like sit here in helicopter, yeah, we just be whacking each other with flooring planks. That would be a real blast. Well, let's see how good I measured and how lucky I get finding the right size pieces. Something tells me I'm not that lucky at the moment. 
I mean, they're gonna have to cut off a bunch. Now that's good. The challenge is finding planks that end or we can line up over our wood. We're gonna be about a foot short. Yeah. I could use this setup probably about there. So that's still three or four planks away. But inevitably moving that over will bring this piece. So I might find some different flooring to fit because I can use the real short pieces like this. I'm not gonna need many of these. I'm trying to like describe it. Oh, let's bring this over here. When I get to the wall, like, okay, I'll, I will need one. That's a five and a half foot piece, but the next piece beyond it, because of the angle here, is probably gonna be eight or nine foot. So if there's short pieces like this, I can eat these up right now. I won't need many of them because on the bigger bin, oh, I don't know how to describe it, but the, the radius, not the radius, the circumference, the angle out here is not as sharp and I won't need as many small planks. I hope I, hopefully you guys understand that. So I'm gonna go, and there's always some good stuff in that real shiny flooring I can use. Here we go with the last piece of floor. It's a magical moment. Yet again, we have a different style of floor. This piece I didn't have to cut, it was already the perfect length. See how well it fits. Because this plank here is different than this plank here in manufacture. And this piece, I had to hammer and hammer to get the inner lock. And this one, Feels like I pretty much just have to walk it in. But we're done. Time to put the flashing in and all the finishing details. The hard part is over. Oh, we're putting the flashing on now. This is where we really seal it up around the edges. And I've got a mix of flashing. A majority of it is this style. I don't know if you can see the difference besides color. This one has some extra crinkles in it for support, but this is just flat. Plus there's way more holes in this stuff. Um, but we're working our way around. I think Brennan is moving the cord outside, so we have this moment to take a break. I'm drilling holes from the inside and he's, well, I'm piloting them and he's coming from the outside. Um, through my pilot hole. That way it's a little more interactive on his end. Um, so it's just a, a counting game, and I think we have just enough flashing for two bins. Okay, sounds like he's got enough cord. So I already piloted it. He's drilling through. Now, believe it or not, there's enough wiggle room here that over 12 sheets, it is possible to be a full hole off or more you can see how much play there is there. If we were crazy enough, I think these would take a 3 8 bolt. I learned a lot like when I go to the, the bin builder shop that there's 3 8 bin bolts, not just 5 16 uh, Kind of eyeball or blow that bolt. Obviously got to be in the center of our hole here. See, this never had any holes for flashing because it was on concrete. So we have to drill our own holes for this. New bins will come pre-punched. Huh. 
Well, I've made it to the quicker portion of this operation, and that's screwing down the flashing to the floor. At least it's quicker than drilling all the holes for the flashing. Got a bunch of three quarter inch sheet metal screws, self tappers. And uh, well, this will pretty well plug the gap. This is a standard operation for pretty much every grain bin. This, uh, this is nothing new what I'm doing here. Cleaning up the scrap. Brennan is powering the elevator by hand, proving that it's easy enough to turn. And because I, since I made the elevator the catch all for the trash, it's sort of easy to clean up, right? What? Wedge again? Now oh, that piece, that, that's been a troublemaker the whole way out. Again? No, it's look at the end. Right there, that long piece is getting oh, lost underneath yeah. the sprocket. It's not really designed for metal, it's designed for grain, right? Well, it's gonna be a little loud here with that running. But it mechanizes the process of the ear corn greatly. Oh, it's a miraculous moment. Finally. The grain bin ear corn crib is completed enough. Took me until April 10th of 23 to get it done. Like I said many times in this video, I'm sure. I started collecting floors and parts in 2018. Yeah, five years. Hopefully two plus two goes faster. I'll make a video about that eventually, about how that's going. But it is mechanically fixed. Um, now, if there's the light, this is the plan to keep the elevator clear. I still have some ear corn to put in it. That will be the next video. Um, and I can probably find a couple more planks if I really need to. But the couple wagons of ear corn I have should just, you know, it will stay mostly in the center. Or even if there's a little bit of throw, will end up slightly off center. So here it is, all finished, all ready for corn. This is probably the first time in 15 plus years that there's been any grain in this. And the first time in probably closer to 30 years that it'll actually be properly, like, functionally used to the point that it'll unload itself versus us just sticking a portable auger in the door. So, we're gonna end it here. We still need to put the fan on over there outside. And I'd like to do some finish work, like put a little roof piece or something to protect the, that from getting too much water in it, because invariably I'm sure it could blow in. I don't have a necessary, like I'll maybe have to come up with a door piece to put down there to try to keep some of the rats out. Um, I mean, it's gotta be better than a wire crib, right? You can't keep anything out of that. At least we'll keep the moisture off this real good. And the neighbors won't know I have ear corn, so they won't talk about that unless they watch the video. Well. That's been a fun farming video, or at least this has been like a huge infrastructure video for me. And we'll catch you guys later uh, with more fun farming action.